everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really fun tunnel fold card, and this is using my one of my favourite, the Hunky Dory for the Lover Stamps, and this is Under the Sea, I believe it is. I'll link it anyway. But um, yeah, it's such a gorgeous card. So you can see all the layers there and all the different sized ovals to make it look like you're looking down through a tunnel, and that's where the name comes from. All folds nice and flat and it stands up really nicely because it's got quite a nice platform. It's one inch deep, so yeah, it's got plenty of support there. And then on the back, you've got plenty of room to write your message. I've also done a matching envelope, which you can see it fits in perfectly. And it's just one of those really special cards. I These are my favorite kind of cards to do. I love coloring and cutting out the little animals and kind of making little scenes. So yeah, I hope you enjoy it and let me show you how to make it. Okay, so to make this you are going to need, or something similar, I've got the Hunky Dory for the Love of Stamps Under the Sea. I've used this a lot and I love it. It's one of my favourite kind of underwater themed cards, um, stamps that I've got. So I'll link all of this as always below. Then I'm using the Bright Rosa Fern Border die again. You're going to see me use this a lot because I said when I first got it that this I think will work really well for seaweed and when you'll see it in a minute die cut it's perfect. So yeah, absolutely love that one. So that's what I've used there. And then the cardstock today, this is, um, again I did share this in one of the What Did I Get videos. This was some cardstock that was sent to me kindly by the Paper Box Limited. So I'm using their matte card. So it's 240 GSM. It's really, really nice. So I've cut all my sizes. Again, I'll link all this below. This is the swatch that they sent me which is a really nice reference so if I do want to order the card again I can see the colours that I've used so again that will all be listed in my blog. Then I'm using my tonic oval nested dies again these are just one of those dies that I always recommend you get if you're looking for a nice oval set because you get the straight edge and the scallop so every other is a straight and then scallop so I'm using all of the straight ones which I've taken off there and I've got the scallop ones still inside but again there are still a few places whether they're still there because I've always linked them but I think there was an eBay seller that still had some but you have to have a little look but I will link as much as I can so I've already gone ahead because again you've seen me color these before and I will link up here all of the other cards that I've made using this stamp set but I've gone ahead here and just colored I've used my Arteza easy blend markers and I've just yeah just had some fun with it and um, I've done the little treasure chest and then all of the little critters there the only one I haven't done is the shark so I've just left him out because they're they're quite they're two quite big stamps so I've gone for the whale there and I think they look really cute and then this is all of my seaweed so when you imagine this is all kind of nestled up it's going to look great I'm really looking forward to it so that is everything kind of prepared so you'll need to go away and you know, decide what it is you're going to use because it doesn't have to be an under the water theme. It could be anything you want. Okay, so for the main case, it's a bit of a random size. It's going to be six and a half high and then it's going to be five and a half when flat in the envelope. So that is because I wanted to use one whole piece of cardstock. I didn't want to have to kind of glue two bits together. So once you see how I'm doing this, then you can, you know, easily adapt this. So you want one piece that's 11 and 3 quarters, so it's the UK default A4 length. Again, once you see what I do, you can adapt this if you've got 11 inches or even for 12 inches. Then that's by 6.5 in height. Okay, so along the longest side, you want to score at 1 inch, 5.5, and 6.5, and, and 11. Okay, I may end up trimming that down to 11 and a quarter possibly so it's just a quarter of an inch tab so we may end up snipping that away I mean it's it's going to stick underneath this one inch one so it is shorter it's about five eighths of an inch so it should be fine but we may take a little bit of bulk off then you want to choose the kind of colors you're going to have for your tunnel so I've got these kind of four different tones here which I think I'm starting with the lightest at the front and then I'm going to end up with the darkest at the back. So these all measure five by six and a half. So it's the height of the card throughout. But on every piece, you want to score at a quarter of an inch and then at four and three quarters. So you're just going to have a quarter of an inch tab on each side because that's what we're going to use to stick the cut, these pieces inside our card. OK, so just do that on all four pieces. Okay, so that's all the scoring done. So now what you want to do is you're going to start off, so have them in the kind of order that you want them. And obviously we've got the very front one here. So the, the back one, I may not actually end up cutting a hole from. And I might, 
this might get changed. We might just end up having that matted on the very back, which will actually end up being the inside here. Actually, if I just fold, fold and burnish this piece, because then it'll start to make sense of how this is all going to come together. Okay, so you need your one inch piece on the left hand side and that smaller tab on the right and you're going to wrap it around and that's going to stick inside. Okay, like so. Then throughout this one inch piece here, the width, we're going to stick these pieces. But thinking about it now, we're going to use the largest oval on the very front of the card here. Okay, so I'm going to die cut that one there. It does only give me a very thin kind of side here, but that's fine. It's going to be, it's going to work totally okay. That one. Then my lighter colour is going to have the next one down, then the next one, that one, and then that one is the smaller one, and that's going to peek into this darker colour, so it's like you're really getting into the kind of the, the bottom of the ocean. That's the kind of look that I'm going for. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to die cut this one here, and then what we do is we use this as a guide to make sure we get all our other ovals all lined up. So first of all, you want to make sure that you get this centered. Now, I'm gonna keep mine in the center, but if you want, you can have it slightly lower down. You may wanna do a little you know, sentiment up here. You may wanna go higher up and have your little sentiment at the bottom. I'm gonna keep mine in the middle because I don't actually really know what I'm gonna put on this yet. I don't know if it's gonna be a birthday card, I don't know. Sometimes I, I don't know that until the very end and it depends how the card ends up looking. Okay, so because this is six and a half wide, I need to use my bigger die cutting machine. If you don't have a bigger A4 one, then you can just shrink the card down so that it is six rather than six and a half tall because that's gonna go through this way. So this is, this is really old. This is the Grand Calibre Spellbinders. But it does the job, so I'm just going to run this one through. It's actually got dust on it where it's not been used. So. And I always put some white down just to cover whenever I'm using white. I would also say don't burnish it. I only burnished it for the video so you could kind of understand how the card goes together. But I would score it because you need to know obviously where you're going to put your dies. But don't burnish it until we've done the first one so now you could go ahead and burnish this because all it does is just kind of squashes your score lines so now you'll see you're always going to have this piece on the left hand side the join we've got the start of our tunnel okay now I can fit all the rest through my normal size die machine so I'm just going to pop all that away okay so grab the next one here and you're going to lie this down and what you want to do is line up the score line so you've got your one inch tab and then that score line so the, the two score lines that are either side of your shape whether it's a circle or an oval you're going to line them up with the two score lines that you've got on here okay so I'm just going to hold this up so I can see it in the light like so and just make sure you've got it nice and flush okay then with this oval you want to sit it so it's in the middle like so. Okay, and you can take that one away. And then again, use that same tape. Pop that down on there. And get that die cut. Okay, so carefully take that off. And now you can just carefully fold and burnish those quarter inch tabs on each side. And now, once we stick all this down, that one is gonna stick away just ever so slightly. And you'll see there, you'll get your first kind of yeah, tunnel feature. So then, you're gonna do exactly the same again with the next size down. So keep all these, they're obviously really handy for toppers for bags. See now, we've got our mats and layer already. So you could now, with the next color, layer it all up. So keep all of them, because they're always good. And then again, with this one, I'm just gonna open that back up again. You can just lay this now perfectly over the top because they're the same size like so and just make sure you're using the, the correct sizes. So again I'm just going to line that one up and get that run through and I'm going to do exactly the same with that one there okay but I'll just speed this bit up. Okay, so now you want to start layering them on top. I'm just going to kind of sit them over like that for the minute and you can kind of see 
Oh, I think that one I've gone slightly off. What I'm going to do, if you're slightly off, like, hang on, let's line that up. So, can you see this one here is the green, it's got slightly thicker here. I don't know why I thought I got that bang on, but when you kind of start covering it, you imagine we're going to have ooh, seaweed and stuff, you're not going to end up seeing that at all. And they're going to be separated like that, so there's going to be more of a gap in them. So yeah, that one there I don't think I'm going to cut, I think I'm going to have that just at the very back and have like maybe that yellow fish swimming right through the middle so you can really kind of see it pop. So again, we'll play around with that when we get to it. Okay, so now we need to start attaching it. And what we're going to do is we're going to attach everything to this back. Okay, so now we need to start attaching these and everything is going to be attached to the middle one inch piece here. Okay, so we're not going to touch the open ends. We're just going to focus on this middle bit for the moment. Now, I would say at this point, if you don't want to have a block colour like I am at the back, now's the time to add your kind of maybe decorative paper or whatever it is. You might want to have something stamped. You might want your sentiment on the back of this. So think about that because I'd say it's now that you want to do that because we're going to start attaching these bits here. So I'm going to stick this one just a little bit away, about a quarter of an inch away from that score line here. So there's the first score line, just this one. We're going to stick this about a quarter of an inch away from that. And then the next one, we will butt it right up to that light blue one at the front. And then the last one, we will butt right up to that one. I'm going to use my red tape. You can use your liquid glue if you would rather have that wiggle room. So, you know, it's entirely up to you what you want to use at this point. So just on, we're working on the right hand side. So the right hand side of whatever it is you're using here. And I'm just going to run some tape down the right hand side of all of those pieces. So I'll just prep it all now. In fact, run the tape on both sides because you're going to have to do that anyway. And it will be easier to do it while it's all flat rather than some of it stuck down. So yeah, go ahead and get your tape if you're using tape on all of them. Okay, so remember you're starting with your largest circle and you're going to take off the right hand side and you want to stick it about a quarter of an inch down. If you want to go slightly higher, that's fine, but as long as you've got it a certain distance away from that score line, just so it creates you know, that kind of depth that we're looking for. So I'm just going to make sure it's lined right up with the top. I've come up a little bit higher, I haven't gone right into the one quarter of an inch because I'd rather have everything fit than be kind of squashed in. Okay, once you've got that stuck down, go in with your bone folder there, okay, and just keep it folded over to the right hand side here, then get your next size down, so you, you know, you want to end up with the smallest size being the last one, and now this one you're going to butt the folded side here right up to the edge of this lighter blue. Okay, so just get it as close as possible and make sure you get it nice and flush with the top. So you do need to, maybe, you know, for some of you the, the wet glue would be better because it will give you that, that wiggle space. And if you've come off at all, yeah, see I've slightly come down a little bit there because I didn't, I don't want to get my head in the camera sometimes, but with that I can just trim it, so that's not a problem. And then this last one here. I'm going to look at this way actually and then I can make sure, there we go, that's better, that's what I should have done before. Okay, so now when I bring them all over, they will all be slightly lifted, look at that, how cool does that look? It's such an awesome effect, I love this, really psychedelic, it plays with your eyes. So now I'm going to just trim those two quarter of an inch pieces off. So it's entirely up to you. In fact, I'm gonna so I'm gonna trim it so that it is the four and a half. But then I would say actually I'm gonna make this four and three eighths of an inch because it will might it might just kind of catch on the sides when we go to fold it flat. So I'd rather it be slightly away because you're not going to see this because it's going to see you're going to be covered. And that looks slightly taller. No, it's not. No, it is flush. So I'm going to get this one stuck down on the very back. 
Okay, so that's all stuck down. Now what you want to do is turn it over and you want to fold them all down and just burnish over that. I might do one at a time actually, just to fold them back into that way. Okay, and then make sure I might have to trim a little bit. I'd say at this point you want to make sure, see I've got it kind of hanging off there. I'm going to flip this over because you're not going to see any of this. It's all going to be locked inside. So I'm just going to, see that one's fine. Flip this one over and just check if you've gone off a bit and turn it upside down and then you'll be able to cut and get a perfect um, cut without actually, you know, cutting your card stock, you know, your card base. And then that one, because that one I dropped it down a little bit and I can see there where I've gone off. So now is your time to be able to, again, just tidy up any little bits. So I just want to show you that even I, you know, I don't always get things lined up. So, but there is always ways to, it's just checking it really before you've gone too far to be able to like doctor it, you know, mend it a little bit. So, and then that last one. So the last one's fine. So now you, when you turn it up, you don't, upside down, you don't want to be able to see any of the color. All right. But that's all, it won't make any difference because that's going to go right over this top. So you can't see none of it. So you would never know. So fold it all down like that. And then you want to take off, um, I'm going to use my pokey tool, take off all the backing. See at this point, when we go to stick the next bit down, that you hold everything down really, really flat. Because that way you know it's going to fit in your envelope. <laughs> so you need this to all be really, really flat. Okay, and then you're going to fold this little hinge, okay, nothing to do with that side. You're going to fold that over and let it catch, even if it catches a little bit on that top one, that's fine. So now I didn't trim it, I'm glad I didn't trim it now. Okay, and then I'm going to use a little bit of wet glue. Do I want to use, no, I'm going to use red tape. I'm going to cover the rest of this white now in red tape. It's up to you, you might want to use wet glue. I'm going to you know, keep it that way. Again, keep everything really, really flat and you just want to fold this right over and kind of roll it along and then make sure everything's lined up and stick that down. And again, make sure it's all stuck. So now if you just carefully bring everything across and kind of square it off, look how cool that all looks. That one's bowed a little bit, there we go. You can see inside. How cool is that? Now, I'm going to decorate mine with it like this. You can decorate each layer as you go as well if you want to. So, again, whatever works easiest for you. But now I have got, because a lot, most of my decoration is going to be within the light blue and the next kind of, um, that medium blue colour. And these kind of cr little critters, some of them I might have to cut, I might have to cut his tail right off, or I might have him right at the bottom here. I'm not sure, I'm gonna kind of play around with the placement. And then these, I might rip off the bottoms a little bit and kind of have a few of them. Some I'm gonna have right on the outside here, kind of like this. Okay, um, and let's have this kind of lighter green there as well. And you want bits kind of going into the tunnel, but you don't want to take away from that detail as well. But these little bits like this, the little like starfish, he can actually be like nestled in amongst like the seaweed. There are just, oh, I just love this stamp set. It's so nice because there's so many little creatures. And then like this little one, he can be stuck just a little bit of glue on the tail and just stick it just on that kind of third oval there. But the puffer fish, I think he was the one I'm gonna have right kind of in the back there. So you can really see him. And then maybe I'll kind of work forward. I don't think I want to, I don't want to cut him, so I think I'm gonna have my whale. I know it seems weird, it's almost like he's outside of the water, but he's not. He's just, you know, it's just an underwater themed card. But I think once I've got more seaweed around him down here, I might kind of have a little bit of him kind of again nestled amongst it. But he's quite a feature, so I think I'm gonna have my kind of sentiment, something kind of there. I'm gonna push them all down a little bit as well because I wanna make sure they are something like that. I've got the treasure chest here, which I wanna have 
right at the bottom as well. So yeah, I'm going to put this all on high speed now and kind of start playing around and yeah, bringing this card to life. Okay, so it's been a couple of days now and I've finished the card. Um, I just have other things that I needed to do, but you can see everything now. I've put it all to, together. I've finished it off with this lovely little sentiment on the top, wishing you a day of happiness. And what I also went and done is I cut a piece of acetate, which was four and a quarter by six and a quarter, and I just slipped it in behind the white piece. And I think it just gives it a really cool look. It just looks like now you're kind of looking through, you know, a fish tank, and yeah, I just think it ties it all together really nicely. On the back, I have this kind of matte and layer here. So this piece, the blue piece here is four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And then the white piece is four by six and I've just stamped happy birthday. I'm gonna stamp and color another little kind of uh, critter and pop them there as well, just to tie it all together. And um, yeah, I just really, really love it. It all folds nice and flat. I will show you how to make the envelope in a minute because I'd already done that. And then I'm kind of dotting bits of videos together, but it should all flow nicely anyway. And um, yeah, I'm just super pleased with how this has turned out. One thing I did notice when I'd done this is, and this isn't a, you know, there's no right or wrong to this. It doesn't matter if you do it, but when you fold it flat, so mine's gonna fold flat going off to the left-hand side. Anything you've got overhanging, so I've got the whale overhanging here, his little tail, will go within that section so it won't interfere with your envelope. But obviously all this here is overhanging, which is actually creating a wider card. So what I've decided to do, and I think would be better, because I actually like that you can have, because you really, you, if you want it to fit in a smaller envelope, then you don't want it to overhang on one side. But I like that it balances out by having this overhanging here and the tail there. So if you follow on the envelope punch board, if you do the card size, which is six by six and a half, so you'll need a piece of 10 by 10 paper, it will make a nice envelope for this. So that's what I'm gonna follow, because if you don't take into account the overhang there, the card actually measures five and a half by six and a half. But I've done it so that it's six, you can see there, that just comes up there, so six by six and a half. Okay, so it's up to you, depending on what you, you know, a lot of you will change the sizes completely, but I'm just going to quickly make the envelope. So, like I said, I'm doing the six by six and a half, so I need a piece of ten by ten, and my score line is four and three quarters. And now, when that goes flat, it will go in this way, and carefully. You always have a little bit extra room as well, so although it says it is six by six and a half, it will be slightly larger, and you can see there, that will close over the top and I've got a lovely envelope. So I hope you've enjoyed this tunnel card as much as I have. It's not too hard to make, it's just lots of processes to it. As long as you get them in the right order, the decoration is, yeah, just a joy to do. So I hope it's inspired you and I hope you like it. Give me a thumbs up if you did and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.